Hello, my amazing children. This is Grandma Carla, and we are back with another chapter of Treasures of the Snow by Patricia St. John. We are on chapter 25, The Song of the Bird. Danny went straight to the hospital when they reached the town. He was taken to a large room full of lame children like himself. There was a rather weary-looking nurse in charge. He took one look at them and decided they all needed cheering up, so offered to do kangaroo hops on his bear crutches all down the ward. It was a great success, and within an hour, Danny was fast friends with everybody. The white kitten was given a basket in the kitchen and was to be allowed in during visiting hours. Annette's arrival was not quite so happy. She was welcomed kindly by Madame Gavette, who was young and pretty and merry, and taken to her room at the top of the house. When she was left alone, she ran across the room and looked out of the window and saw houses and slushy snow in the streets and gray skies. She gazed for a moment and then she flung herself on the bed, and for the second time she wept for the white snow and the clean peaks and the clear skies of home. Here, Madame Gavette found her half an hour later when she came up to see what had happened to her. She said nothing, but slipped away and returned with baby Claire in her arms. She laid her down on the bed beside Annette. She could not have done anything better. Five minutes later, Annette was sitting up, smiling with baby Claire, chuckling and wriggling on her lap. And yet another minute, and Annette was chuckling back. She was happy and busy at Monsieur Gavette's house. In the morning, she helped Madame and looked after the children. In the afternoon, she sat with Danny, and in the evening, she did her lessons. The children were not always good, and often, to begin with, Madame Gavette would have to be sent for to keep the peace. But although she sometimes felt cross and impatient with them, she tried hard to remember Grandmother's text, Love suffereth long and is kind. She would say to herself desperately, when Mark refused to lace his boots and Yvette spilled ink on the floor and John Paul ran away and fell in the mud, Gradually, the love of Jesus in her began to make her patient and kind and unselfish, and she found that she could speak gently and keep her temper. Danny was in the hospital a week before he had his operation. He went off to the operating room in an interested and rather excited frame of mind She and went fearlessly to sleep. But when he woke up hours later, he was very upset to find that his bed had been tipped up and there were large iron weights on the end of his leg, which hurt very much. He felt sick and hot and screamed for Annette. When the nurse came, he reached out to slap her for not being Annette, which was unreasonable of him. All that week, Danny lay on his back with the weights hanging on his leg feeling feverish and miserable. Annette came every day and read to him and told him stories about the white-sailed ships on the lake outside the great glass doors. She tried to make him forget how badly his leg was hurting, but it was a miserable week. Dull clouds hung low over the gray waters of the lake, and Danny tossed and fretted and tried to be brave but could not manage it. But in those long days, there, were just one, there was just one thing that comforted Danny. On the wall opposite was a picture with some writing under it that Danny could not read. And when he was tired of the pain and tired of stories and tired of the Gray Lake and all of the other children, he looked at this picture because he never got tired of it. It was the picture of the Lord Jesus sitting in a field of flowers and the children of the world standing around him looking up into his face. On the grass at his feet sat a black boy and on his knee was an Indian girl. His arms were brown around a little girl in the blue dress and the children of China and the South Seas were nestling up to him. It was about a week after the operation when Danny and Annette first talked about that picture. It had been a dull day with clouds lying low over the lake. The twilight had fallen early. 
The lights were on and most of the children were asleep, but Annette still sat beside Danny. She had stayed late the past few nights because he was so restless without her. Now he lay with his arms flung above his head on his pillow, his hair pushed back from his hot forehead and his blue eyes very bright. He was tired, 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 and wanted to go to sleep so badly. He, but the pain in his leg kept him awake. So he rolled his head around to look at the picture with the writing underneath. What does it say, Net? asked Danny suddenly. It says, suffer little children to come unto me, replied Annette, who was looking too. I know that story, went on the weary little voice. Grandmother told it to me. Are those the children in the Bible? Haven't they got on funny clothes? Yes, said Annette, but they aren't the children in the Bible. They are other children from all over the world, Indians and Africans, and the little girl is Swiss. Why? asked Danny. Well, I suppose to show that all children can come to Jesus, not just the ones in the Bible. How? asked Danny. Well, I don't know quite how to explain it. You just say you want to come, Danny, and then you're there. I suppose Jesus sort of picks you up in his arms like the Bible children, even though you can't see him. Oh, said Danny, I see, Annette. My leg hurts so badly, I wish I could go to sleep. He began to cry and throw his arms about. Annette shook up his pillows, gave him a drink, and he sank back with a tired sigh. Sing to me, he commanded, and Annette sang very softly because she did not want the nurse to hear. Okay, tamen paterno, mi venus a moon coucher. Not sure what that means, but maybe they'll tell us in a minute. And as she sang, Danny closed his eyes. But in the next few seconds, that pass when you are not quite awake or quite asleep, Danny thought he saw the picture again. The Indian child had gone. And sitting in her place, looking up into the face of Jesus, sat a thin, brown-faced little boy with rumpled, sun-bleached hair, and on the grass at his feet lay a pair of crutches with bear's heads carved on them. It's me, said Danny to himself, and he fell asleep for joy. Several things happened while Danny lay sleeping first. First, Mon Monsieur Givet came and lifted one of the weights off his leg. Secondly, his fever left him. Thirdly, a warm south wind came breathing over the land, scattering the clouds and clearing the sky. Oh, may the hand of my father bless me as I go to sleep. So that's what the little song was that she was singing in French. Danny slept and slept and slept. And when he woke up, he thought he must somehow have got into a new world and lay quite still thinking about it for a long time. He felt cool and comfortable, and his leg had stopped hurting. The big glass doors of the ward had been flung wide open, and through them Danny could see, for the first time, blue water, misty blue mountains on the other side of the lake, and a blue sky swept clean by the winds. Tiny, ragged, white clouds strayed all over it. Baby clouds skipping about. They reminded Danny of baby goats skipping about the fields where the snow had melted and the flowers had sprung up. I'm going to get well, said Danny to himself, taking long breaths of cool, sweet air. The breeze through the door smelled of wet earth and warm rain, and he shut his eyes and suddenly knew with great joy that spring was coming. And as he lay sniffing and listening, one bird began to sing, to sing with all its might as though it were the sole herald of the great awakening. It's coming, 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 sang the bird. You're going to get well, well, well. The door opened and Annette clattered up the hospital ward, warm and rosy from the wind. She usually came across after breakfast just to see how he was. 
Isn't it a lovely day, Danny, she cried. Look at the lake and the mountains on the other side and the little ships. Danny turned his head solemnly toward her. Annette, where are my bear crutches? Oh, Danny, bind your rocker, why? Well, you know, that poor little boy in the corner, he might use them. Give them to him. But why, Danny? You like them so much yourself. I know, but I won't want them ever any more. I'm going to get better and run about in ordinary, ordinary boots. And he was right. He never did want them any more. He got perfectly well. Oh, that's exciting. And that is the end of chapter 25. And the next chapter, I think, might be the last one. Let me see. I think we have just one more chapter left. This is Grandma Carla, and I love you.